My name is John Golan, and I'm going to be presenting a short summary on aircraft performance, a little bit on what it means, how it's measured, and how it's calculated. Now, this particular summary was originally assembled into a single presentation. Unfortunately, altogether, since it's a fairly broad topic, it's roughly an hour-long presentation. So what I've done is I've broken it into a series of bite-sized pieces that will respectively cover the design crossroads between performance and mission analysis, then a little bit of the mathematics behind aircraft performance calculations, a little bit on turn rate and acceleration as measures of performance, energy maneuverability, and finally some example calculations. Aircraft performance answers the question of what can the airplane do. Things like takeoff distance, landing distance, stall speed, maximum speed, cruise speed, turn rate, all of these are different measures of performance. The mission analysis, on the other hand, tells us how far and with what payload the aircraft can travel. So you could have two aircraft that meet very similar performance specs. For example, you could take both a 737 and a 747. And the two aircraft might have some similar requirements in terms of takeoff and landing distance, but will have radically different requirements in terms of the mission performance, the range. And where the performance and the mission requirements cross, that's how the airplane is ultimately sized. Now, early in the design process, in conceptual and even into preliminary design, we will typically express the performance of the aircraft in the form of a constraint diagram. This is a plot with a thrust loading or thrust to weight ratio on the vertical axis and the wing loading or the weight divided by the wing area on the horizontal axis. And now within this plot we will present lines that meet the spec requirement for takeoff distance, landing distance, cruise speed, what have you. And these will define between them a solution space within which we have combinations of thrust loading and wing loading that meet all of the spec requirements. Now within this solution space, the manufacturer will typically down-select to the configuration with the smallest thrust to weight ratio and the highest wing loading, that's the smallest wing area, that meets all of the requirements. And the reason for this is that we have a customer who has already specified the performance that he's willing to pay for and who is not likely to be willing to pay more for either a larger wing area, which means more weight, more raw material, more cost, or a larger engine, which also means more raw material, more cost. So typically from the manufacturer's standpoint, you provide the customer with what he asked for, which is, again, the lowest possible thrust loading, highest possible wing loading, that still meets all of the requirements for the airplane. So the process usually is to use the constraint diagram, the performance requirements for the aircraft, to tell us what the thrust to weight ratio needs to be, as well as the wing loading, to meet all of the performance criteria, and in turn to use the mission analysis to tell us how big the airplane needs to be to match the range and payload requirements. And this is typically an iterative process, as we will see in the next sequence.